welcome back, viewers and esteemed members of our board of directors, to Corota Motors. In the last episode, we introduced the Cetriolo, our hit van and utility vehicle, which is currently failing emissions. So in this episode, we're going to fix the Cetriolo so we don't pay a small fortune for fines. It is currently 1973. Elton John's Crocodile Rock is on the number one hits list in both Italy and the United States. And we're getting ready for some new cars for the age of disco. Besides the urgent problem of fixing emissions, in this episode, we're replacing the second gen Coniglio with a third generation. Not only that, we have a new rival. Thanks to Fox Alpha on Discord, we have Vizaire Transport, a Fiat-like manufacturer who will be directly competing with us. Right now, their Liar city budget variant is currently selling a lot more cars than our direct competitor, uh, the Coniglio 2 Merde trim. Although, if you look at it overall, I think the stats aren't too terribly far off. We're noticeably lower in drivability at 56 versus 61. We have more sportiness, more comfort, a little more reliability and safety, slightly less gas mileage. Uh, they're coming through as a lot more affordable, which I think is just a factor that you get when you put them in the competitor file because it tries to estimate a price for a car instead of having the price that you input at a player with all of your factory costs you have to make up for. And of course, because we're playing on a very high difficulty, they get a 30% bonus to their final desirability. So we have to score a lot higher in our raw stats to really be seen as a better car by the buyers in automation. And those two big factors are why, despite having a lower market awareness, they're selling way more cars than we are. But that's okay. We'll catch up with them. They also have the Tinamo, just that little little bug looking thing, uh, and the older version of the Liar. They got a sedan. So we'll we'll be trying to compare and catch up to them. Our existing rival, Dunbar 3, is still mainly operating the luxury market. They're up to the Model 2 Mark IV and the Model 1 Mark 7 on sale at the same time. There's some gigantic cars for us to compete with. We'll be seeing if we can get any scoop into the luxury and premium markets. We also had a vote on the body that we'll be using for the next generation of the Coniglio. It's here, it's going to unlock in five months. And uh, we still probably won't be starting right away because we want to finish our facelift that's going to bring our existing cars in plans with emissions before we start engineering the new model. We might even make a new generation of engine. And for that purpose, I'm going to dump some more R&D money in the engine architecture. that will be another $1 million a month or so. And I want to put one on brakes as well. Before we get started with our urgent business of fixing emissions and then introducing a new model, let's have a look at the comments. First things first, we have a lot of users suggesting that we should be introducing some turbochargers. So I've gone ahead and already put a little R&D into turbos. Hopefully we'll be adding some turbo variants soon. I'm not sure if we're going to turbo uh, the, the smaller engine or just the big one is like a top of the line. We'll see kind of what we can work with here. We have a couple suggestions for a rally car based on the Caprice. That might have to be more of a bonus episode thing. We're uh, sometimes tight on finances. And I don't really want to design in the campaign a variant that's going to uh, cut into our engineering time too much. A couple board members are reminding us that we should be focusing on our small cars, which is the Coniglio, which is in, in dire need of an update. I'm also seeing a couple suggestions that the Cetriolo should have a larger engine, such as a Gladiatore or a new engine family. I wish to see four inch exhausts on the next car. Uh, we'll see. East Germany is based, says we need a cheap midsize car. Well, you get a Turbant, whether you like it or not. Alex PC also suggests we introduce a midsize car, or a Fiat 131 is, I think, kind of midsize by our standards. We will see if we have uh, an extra factory opening up to have 
two mainline cars. Right now we have the Coniglio centering on our like general city family markets. And then we have a sport and a truck. We could have a small and a mid both kind of going for those markets. Renscon says, Carrot Car, which is a good time to introduce my new badges on the Steam Workshop. I've made the uh, old ugly badge available in case you have shared my save file and you want to open the cars correctly, even though it's going to open stupid in the game. It'll be gigantic and you have to shut it down. A new Kuroda badge and a hood ornament, which we should be introducing soon too. Now, our first order of business will be updating the Cetriolo. Let's see. I think, uh, which one's costing us the most right now? Uh, apparently, yeah, the delivery is getting us the most fines. So that's what I'm going to tune first. We'll be introducing the fifth generation of the Lanita engine for this. And uh, we may need to make some longer gearing. So we can see over here, uh, our emissions result is WES1. That's World Emissions Standard. And uh, this chart suggests we have WES6 coming up to worry about. And the current standard in Frunia and Gasmia is 4. And there's certain numbers of hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen oxides to worry about for all of those. Right now we have no catalytic converter, and in fact, we still haven't even unlocked a catalytic converter option. So we're gonna have to tune this pretty high, uh, pretty carefully in terms of emissions to pass it without a cat. We're actually, no, more like our main problem is that we are on leaded fuel. And that's a major issue as well. I forgot about is that uh, leaded fuel will be banned soon. We can see right here that leaded fuel gets banned in Fruinia in 1978. That's only five years from now, so we need to hurry up and get on unleaded fuel, which will also allow us to use a catalytic converter. Now, also a little more helpfully, if we go to detail stats on the car screen and then down to fuel economy, we can see this nice little timeline that shows when each emission standard is coming up. And in both Gasmia and Fruinia, uh, World Emission Standard 6 will be acted on by 1976. So I think that is what we need to meet. So first things first, change to unleaded regular. Our fuel availability takes a little hit, I think, in our target markets. If I go to, uh, there's going to be some better buttons for this introduced in patch five. Uh, I don't think I mentioned I was waiting uh, for patch five to come out, but that that hasn't happened. I need to hurry up and do the episode as of this film and we're still playing on patch four. Uh, so there's there's going to be some buttons up over here. You can turn on and off the countries. But you can also go to markets and click these flags here. So we'll turn off uh, Luha and Arcana to get a better idea of our fuel availability. I can mouse over light delivery and see that there is a 72.3% fuel availability for my unleaded regular in uh, markets I'm selling to. That's kind of rough in Fruinia, is that uh, if you are on schedule for the banning of leaded fuel, they still don't have the fuel pumps out. Your customers are annoyed by that. So it's going to hurt our sales a bit, but we'll have to deal with it. And in a couple years, when this actually comes out, It'll be a little more available as well. So, unleaded fuel. And let's just slap a crappy two way catalytic converter on there, which immediately gets us up to WES5, even on this short gearing. That's pretty good. So, we still need to get some carbon monoxide down. That's going to mean, I think, running it leaner. 
and get some knocks down. Not by much. We will see what I can do to accomplish that. Lower cams help. We're already pretty low on cams. And, oh, yeah, you can see sticking that catalytic converter on there has cost us like five horsepower, uh, which is like 10% of our horsepower. This engine does not make a lot of power, and we desperately need it. But that catalytic converter is uh, causing us some problems. Actually, what I do need to do is open up the exhaust. That, that gets it mostly back. You can make a, a bigger exhaust with the cat. And, uh, you know, catalytic converters, they're just nasty in terms of engine performance, especially these two-way ones. There'll be a three-way later that's a little more advanced and also helps with nitrogen oxide more. But this is kind of the cause of all the engines in the 70s that made less horsepower than the same engine did in the 60s. I don't know what changed, but I'm now seeing fuel availability of 96%. Maybe it just took a moment to update. So emissions, we need to get to... Oh, what, what changed? We were passing a minute ago. I guess I didn't like that I made my exhaust bigger. We can also hit this uh, emissions optimization. So if you look at our fuel map, uh, it's, it's sometimes running richer and sometimes running leaner. Uh, so emissions optimization will run it at exactly stoichiometric or Lambda 1.0. And that makes the catalytic converter more effective. But in this case, it's not helping us with carbon monoxide at all. Uh, what else can I do? We can make first gear a little taller. It won't help our utility stat, which is what the uh, delivery buyers really like. But it might help our fuel economy and therefore emissions. Still pretty rough. We're at four. We're passing for now. But when this thing comes out in 1975 or 6, it won't be passing anymore. Oh, hyper eutectic cast pistons. Those help with emissions somehow, chemically. I, I don't understand it terribly well, but they do. Now we just need less carbon monoxide. We're passing on hydrocarbons, which is like unburnt fuel, and nitrogen oxides, which tend to happen when you burn too lean. Actually, afford to burn a little leaner. Yes, yeah, so you can see every tick that I go leaner on the fuel map, we get worse on nitrogen oxides. We're still passing, fortunately, and better on carbon monoxide. Uh, but not good. We're failing by a lot still. It's gonna be a problem for us. If I make the carb smaller, does that help us? doesn't. Manifold smaller makes it worse. Manifold bigger, carb bigger? Uh, we also have unlocked uh, fuel injection. That'll be expensive to get in right now, though. If I hold the engine, uh, mechanical fuel injection right now would not benefit us, apparently. We will stick to our eco carburetor. We're about to unlock a uh, single point electronic fuel injection. It's like an electronic carburetor kind of thing, but we won't be using it right away. Why is carbon monoxide so freaking high? Taking a little compression out helps uh, a little bit, not much. But it's not something we want to do to help it. Okay, there we go. Going to an extremely lean fuel map and adding emissions optimizations. So this whole region bound in in white is stoichiometric and the stuff outside of it is running lean uh, where all these highlighted dots are areas on the fuel map we actually drive in during the tests. We can finally pass. As you can see, uh, if you have a larger engine these highlighted dots, they'll cluster towards the bottom left. That is to say, you're using lower RPM and lower throttle. Uh, during the actual emissions testing, we are uh, full throttle on the red line uh, for some of the time. 
as to say our engine is seriously too small and the person testing the car is ragging it for everything it's got, which is not really helping us in terms of emissions. Uh, we could almost be better off with a bigger engine on, uh, you know, on our van, unsurprisingly. But we are passing emissions. We've gained some fuel economy. It's not as nice to drive because we've lost some power. We're down to what? 50 horsepower from our original 52. It could be worse. It could be worse. We didn't get hit with the emission stick that hard is one benefit of a tiny engine. And uh, I could make like a, a super emissions variant that has to go in the vans and like a regular variant for the cars. But I'll probably just leave it at this one. It's going to be a little less powerful. Barely fuel efficient because we're running it so lean. God, this car is a top speed of 65 miles an hour. That's horrible. Let's put a couple points of aero quality into it. Gets us to 68.9. Oh, that's uh, that's rough. We have three, three whole points of aero quality. We have three tech pool. We have to sleek up this van a little bit in order to get up to highway speed. 69.6. Nice miles per hour. Uh, that'll have to be that. You can also throw point of quality. Wow. Increasing my quality on the drivetrain here has reduced my fuel economy. Marginally, but it has. I am not getting good gains out of drivetrain quality on this particular car. Ah, uh, yes. And it's time to do some visual updates. This badge, it's obsolete. We have the new Kurota Motors badge, which looks so much nicer. So much nicer. And the same for the back of the car as well. It's just a van. I don't think anything else major needs to change visually. Uh, we would be nice if I could see my interior. There we go. That slider doesn't seem to apply itself sometimes. And uh, you know what else? We haven't really picked out wheels. I think like I just forgot. I mean, the standard steelies are okay for a van, but uh, we can do a little more flourish than that, can't we? 70s hubcaps. Yeah, that'll do it. Just basic. And we can get uh, one bit of body color on there. What else? What else? Can we get eight tracks? May as well. I could try to do it a standard 70s safety. I'm not sure that matters to the desirability much. I might leave it mediocre safety as it is. And then, so the problem we ran into before was that the Lanita D passed emissions on the smaller car, but not on these cars. We also have to double check on each variant that we are passing emissions, because they could have way different, they have different gearing tires uh, that could cause us to fail our emissions and therefore pay fines, which I don't want to do. So in the engine screen, WS6, that means we're meeting our goal. And we give it a little taller first gear, because we were seeing a reliability penalty on the transmission, since our top speed and bottom speed are too far apart. That is something that gets a lot of... Uh, balance tweaks recently. We'll replace our premium radio with a premium 8-track. I don't think any other big changes need to happen. And of course, the camper as well. Looks like it does pass emissions. And it's getting the 8-track player upgrade. And it, too, gets a little higher first gear. I think these penalties got tweaked at some point. Either that or I rather foolishly ignored them when I was building the car last time. But uh, these markets really like that reliability, so we got to be on top of that. Now, engineering time is looking very low. That's good. 
I might just do a quick check and see if I can afford to update the safety. That's normally very expensive, but since I haven't got a lot going on this facelift. Bring us to 11 months. I think we can afford it. Now, I don't know. We'll synchronize this with the other ones. I'm aiming for, I guess, one year, maybe, on this. And the engine will also have no problem getting done in one year, because we didn't actually make any big changes. Most of us added that catalytic converter. There, the reliability slider is through the roof. We're getting a 22% bonus. Which shows up as red for some reason, but whatever. Uh, on this screen, it occurs to me that I have apparently been building the Gladiatore out of a contract factory only. Uh, I might have to say that way, actually, so we sell a lot of them. But... I should do what I said I'd do and see if the Gladiatore works well in this uh, Cetriolo. It looks like a test version, just of the utility. They have to be unleaded like everything else, the Cali Converter. Way, way less cams. And that was surprisingly easy. Make a tune that passes emissions. And it is uh, apparently not terribly desirable. How does that compare to our existing one, though? Let's see. We've gained drivability, comfort, prestige, uh, safety. We've lost so much reliability. It's not even funny, going from 76 to 63. Uh, we've gained utility, lost fuel economy. Uh, I don't think that's going to be it for us, just on the reliability front. The fact that this thing is uh, aluminum dual overhead cam, not sure if that's going to be it for us. Best I can do is 15 miles a gallon. And, I mean, I guess I could see if I can mess with the engineering sliders. I was get this done in 12 months. I get the engineering reliability up to... Ah, uh, yeah, it's not happening. Expensive, too. The, the Gladiatore in the trucks might have to wait. I might dare a factory upgrade, though. We have a lot of pre-orders on those things. Those prices will do for now. Now the Coniglio. If this thing's going to lose a couple horsepower, let's see how it handles it. Go to the new E variant. Now we can compare it to our last generation version. What's changed? We lost sportiness, we gained comfort, we lost prestige, we gained drivability. Fuel economy, exactly the same. We do gain a lot of reliability. This is that engineering slider. At least being super reliable will be good for our brand, if nothing else. And we're still hitting 100 miles an hour, so it really could be worse. I'm disappointed that all of those, uh, all that lean fuel map didn't give us better fuel economy. It didn't work on a truck, but not here. Uh, these things can keep the old, ugly Corota badges. We'll, we'll put a better badge on the next version. That's how you'll know that our company is rounded a corner in its history. Looks like upgrading to five speeds will help us here. We get a little more fuel economy, a little tiny bit more drivability. Eight tracks, you bet. That should be a standard upgrade for our cars across the board at this point. Adding quality points to the manual steering rack is very cheap. It's going to go all the way to plus five. I'm also realizing I can get quite a few points of drivability out by stiffening up the springs on this car. 
because we were on maybe the soft side before. That's going to cost us a little comfort, but we're high on comfort compared to our competitors, I think. So that's what we're going to do. So the new Coniglio, five speed, stiffer springs, and uh, unleaded fuel with a catalytic converter. Those are the big changes. And a track player, of course. Ah, uh, yes, the elite Coniglio. What else can we tweak here? And slap on some extra quality here and there. Same increase in suspension. Five speeds like the other cars. We can put a medium compound tires. That gains us some comfort and drivability. It's a little wider gearing too. Better for acceleration and drivability. Not as good for fuel economy, but that's fine. And we're going to lose the original front badge in favor of our hood ornament. Oh yes, look at that carrot. That's a little too big though. 0.5? Yeah, 0.5 is good. Yeah, you know, it's a real 60s, 70s luxury car. It's got a big old hood ornament on it. That's how you know your brand is worth a lot of money, supposedly. We want it to be very silly. We could try and see if this can get a turbo. Or actually, we want to be smarter would be just to start with a sport version. Because there is a sport Lenita. Go for us to unleaded. Put a catalytic converter on it. Open the exhaust back up. Got WES5 to start with and 76 horsepower. Gotta go with the good pistons. That's not bad to begin with. We've gained a lot of sportiness. Uh, actually, only lost drivability and comfort, so it might not be the thing for the elite Coniglio. Uh, 70s is a little absurd for an economy turbo, but I could feel it out. My goal is to gain drivability and comfort, not so much sportiness. It's, it's good if it's there, but I don't want to lose the other ones. The default turbo size is just way too small. Uh, we've got these crazy turbo maps. Maybe we'll talk more about those later. But uh, right now, uh, we're choked on the exhaust and the fuel system. What's that big old turbo result in uh, going from 50 to 78 horsepower? I think we did actually gain drivability and comfort. So a turbo engine might have some validity for us. Of course, it's not actually showing up good in any of these demographics. It's a uh, fun premium, a little bit. Really target commuter premium. That should be what we're, we're going for with this car. What do they want? Drivability, which we've got. Sportiness, which we've got. Comfort, which we're about equal with the uh, competition on. Prestige, we're low on. You know, look more expensive. Safety, we're kind of low on. We're not updating that for this car. That'll be the next generation. I think we're really about on par. I don't know why we're not doing better, honestly. Maybe it's just we're not way better than competition, and they have that 30% bonus, you know? Let's see. So, 74% desirability in commuter premium with that engine, with the, uh, the standard. 57 with the Sport. They hate the Sport. 81.8. Nine with the turbo. They like the turbo. So yeah, maybe turbo is going to be a thing. How are we doing on emissions? Uh, could could be better. Oh gosh, tuning a turbo for emissions. I really don't know how to do even. It's apparently not gotten any better by adding the turbo. That's for sure. First off, boost is way too high. 
drop that boost. Uh, turbo graph, turbo graph. We can drop AR trim. The inducer gets smaller. Our boost comes on earlier and starts to choke later. So AR trim is kind of the pitch of the blades and the turbine. And they move this full efficiency graph to the left, where the blue line is our actual like RPM and airflow, where we are occupying. So if I make everything smaller, uh, I can keep us in the efficient zone by turning the AR ratio down. And the whole power band gets wider and smoother too, as I make the turbo smaller and the boost lower, which is exactly what we want for a car like this. Now back to emissions. I've made it a more sensible tune. We're closer to passing. Turns out all I needed to do was take my emissions optimization away, let it run lean, and we're doing okay. Oh, and we are breaking the engine because we're making too much torque. And we're choking at the carburetor. Which... Uh, man, turbo adds to your maintenance costs. If I go dual carb, it'll be even more. Probably fine where it is. Now, uh, something changed and they hate it. What changed? Low reliability. Yes, because we're breaking the engine. That's a problem. Uh, uh, what can we do? We need to handle all this torque. I just go, go heavy. Yes, heavy cast parts will do it for us. Uh, ooh, harmonic dampener. Smooth out the engine. Smoothness helps for our premium markets. Uh, all in all, we seem to be uh, about where we started before I tweaked the tune. And we failed emissions again after I changed something. One point of leanness will do it. We're making, what, 70, 72 horsepower? How does that compare to our sport? It's about the same at lower RPM with a wider band. So I can probably replace the Sport with the Turbo. And this Turbo will make the same power while passing emissions, which uh, I don't know how hard that would be with the Sport. But I don't want to find out. All right, now, there is a rule in the 1970s. You cannot turbocharge a car without having some kind of badge on it that says Turbo. This is, this is absolutely strict. Yep, yeah, just get a, one of those little things there. One of those little things there. Small badge. It's a little understated. Unlike our uh, foot ornament. And that's our premium car has become the Coniglio 2 Elite with the turbo motor. And we are looking at a little more than a year to get this done. Uh, engine, oh. Hmm. Engineering time of 80 months based on the turbocharger alone, huh? Right, that's an early unlock. It's a problem for us. Right. Yeah, nope, not happening. Cancel the turbo. So we learned some stuff about turbo tuning by playing with that, but, uh, we need to get these updates out in time for emissions, and it's just, it's not going that way. This is getting the mediocre standard motor. Sorry, everyone. Oh, yes, and sadly, that means that we have to go and strip off those turbo badges. All right, the Caprice is the last existing model that needs some changes. So the Primo version is getting the sport engine and not a turbo, because we just found out what a huge fiasco it would be to actually get that engineered. You might need to develop that on the side. I'm going to... It looks like we're pretty close to passing emissions, surprisingly, with our sport tune. 
I'm going to tune it for power first and then see what I need to change to get to WS6. We still have a nice screaming high normally aspirated motor that is making as much power as our turbo would have. Just with our mid intake, mid exhaust set up here. Turns out I could actually gain some power by shrinking my exhaust headers because they were a little too big to begin with. Is the same going to be true of the carburetor? Uh, no, it likes to be at like 90% flow, I guess. Get another top end quality in there too. That won't hurt anything. And then, uh, what happens if I just put one emissions optimization on? It's going to control like our idle, our very low cruising speed. Uh, that helps a little bit. I keep going up. It's not helping that much on the Nox. If I make it richer, it helps with Nox, but eventually I fail on CO. And emissions optimizations makes that worse only. I have to take cams out. Ooh. That has a very bad effect on my CO. And Nox goes down and then up again. Weird behavior. I could just let it fail by 15%. I'd be paying a fine, but it might not be a very large fine. Ignition. If I tweak this. I lean it out also ignitions optimize. It gets us somewhere. Not good for my throttle response, but it is what it is. Where we at now? 77 horsepower again. If I up the bouncing mass, my idle speed goes down, which helps me pass Nox. I get one, two points of leanness. Ah, yes, we've passed WS6, and it's cost us uh, like a couple horsepower compared to what we had otherwise, and some throttle response. But we're fully passing emissions, which I like. It's, you know, Corota should be green, right? Probably. Now, as for the Gladiatore, making 154 horsepower and also just marginally failing emissions. Actually, it's all on hydrocarbons, so it's unburnt gas, I guess. We need to go to unleaded fuel and put a catalytic converter on it. Instant pass, no problem. Uh, that power back. We've lost a few horsepower somewhere from the catalytic converter, but still passing easily. Now, let's see here. Just looking ahead, the Gladiatore normal upgrade take us about 12 months baseline uh, to do. Or about 8 months baseline. And we can afford to dump reliability and stuff on the Gladiatore if we really want to. So let's say I want to make a turbo. Not even putting it in the car yet. Not even tuning it yet. This putting turbocharger hitting minus six quality because this would be a lot of engineering. Minus seven even. Crappy 70s turbo. Can we afford to engineer this thing within like one year, preferably? I 
dump the reliability. Dump the tooling. Dump the process. Ooh. Uh, you know, 18 months is pretty reasonable. But it's it's pushing it in that I want to hurry up the other cars. I could just drag everything out to 18 months and get my uh, my Turbo Gladiatore. Even delete the standard. And then the Gladiatore can serve as our test bed for a Turbo. So the Elite is only going to be available in our crazy, stupid Turbo version. Maybe. Alright, it's looking kind of grim. I went and just mocked up a, uh, a normally aspirated version with like 150 horsepower versus that crazy turbo with around 180. And uh, it, the, the normally aspirated version is looking more desirable to customers. It's noticeably less prestigious. It's it, That's a big factor. The, the turbo is cool and it goes faster. Get that top speed bonus in there. But it's more drivable, it's more sporty, it's more comfortable, it's more reliable, it's better fuel economy, it's lighter. Uh, basically everything that our customers care about, except for prestige, which is a factor in a car like this, is, is much better with normally aspirated engine. And uh, it might be that the turbo is a little ahead of its time still. So I'm going to the normally aspirated version for now. Uh, other small changes this car is getting are pretty much the usual stuff. You've got um, a point of aerodynamics quality in there, or two. Got eight track player. Got that steering rack quality in there. Got a plus one of the suspension as well. It's not going to hurt anything. And uh, while we're in here, we definitely need one of these hood ornaments. Ah, uh, yeah, and targeting time of 12 months with our not big changes. Let's just get pressure down to zero for a full 50% bonus to our familiarity gains from this car. So technology like the 8-track player uh, is going to get easier to engineer for us in the future. Uh, exhaust engineering is costing us a bit on the Gladiatore. Or, no, we're not even making a turbo. Hang on. That's a problem. Delete the turbo. There. Now we can easily afford to get this thing done within one year. And it's probably... Maybe it's going to be the contract factory for now? I can afford to build a factory. I'm just not sure... If it's justified in terms of our production numbers, 300 produced. Uh, let's get a look here. Yeah, it looks like it barely occupies a small one, but uh, I mean, I could use the land plot. It might actually be time for some factory juggling. I think the Lanita is, uh, is it overworked? Like, no, we're doing okay. Yes, Forecaster is telling me to charge more money. That's what I'll do for now. Yeah, I take the contract off. It'll fully use up a small one factory, which is fine. And uh, we can do some more factory juggling later. I made a large plot, so I'll probably move a main engine into there and that into the small one, but whatever. It'll all happen later. And last thing, this is going to take 13 months no matter what. So, I hate to be unoptimal, 
I'm going to go into each and every one of these projects and use up one extra month of engineering to take advantage. And I am going to take out a loan on this, just to be safe. So there, in a mere 13 months, we can start planning the details of our new models. So we will be emissions compliant with our existing models. Hey, did I not start working in Gasmia? I must have forgot. I think we unlocked them in 1970. Well, hopefully soon we'll start selling cars in Gasmia. Of course, we're seeing our money go down because I did not take out a loan for all of the value of these factories. Just a good portion of it so we can be safe. I don't want any surprises. We came pretty close last time I did a big upgrade to going bankrupt. Every factory has higher refresh costs because they're overworked. And of course, we're making big money. Everything's on a good amount of pre-orders, selling at a high price, dealership margins are razor thin. Holy crap. They're making less than 10% margins on the Coniglio 2. Well, we're apparently making like 100% margins. In fact, I really should be building a bigger factory and selling at smaller margins to sell more cars, but uh, I guess I have to make that profit first to build a bigger factory. No big crazy unlocks coming up yet. So now in 1974, we might as well start planning the design of our next generation vehicle. So this is the body we settled on, the 1978 2.3 meter version. And the main version of the car will be the hatchback, as always, that sells to the city market, our original primary audience. We're going steel, unibody. And front engine. And uh, now we come to a bit of a decision. Since we're starting at a little more mass market, we should maybe do what I originally thought we should do, which is go for a cheaper suspension type. We've been using expensive double wishbone, uh, expensive to engineer mainly, and not expensive to build. But most like economy cars would use something more like this McPherson strut, which is clearly a simpler design, and maybe some trailing arms or even a torsion beam in back. You can see those are both cheaper by a good bit. That saves us like four man hours per car and I guess a decent chunk of engineering time, although, uh, like we kind of pay for that once the first time. Even just putting a single plus one or plus two on the quality brings that all back at, I don't know how much of actual benefit to us. But I'm going to start off with this design that might be a little cheaper and see if it's worth it for us. And I might go crazy. We have the technology. to build an aluminum engine for our main cars with a dual overhead cam. Probably keep it again around 1.6. And this should be lighter and more fuel efficient for us. The reliability will not be as good and it'll be more expensive. But that's what I've been kind of building towards and this is the kind of engine that could last us a long time. And we can even try and get really crazy and go for a uh, electrical fuel injector is uh, sticking in the side right here instead of a carburetor. Since it's a new engine, it kind of makes more sense to engineer stuff like this. And again, we'll see what the time looks like and if it's viable with this car at all. Still haven't unlocked the better uh, catalytic converter. And this is using an early unlock penalty of like three years. So I go to minus three quality as a baseline. If we compare that to a carburetor, it has the same fuel efficiency as a carburetor with plus 11 quality. So it's, it's not like we're not getting something even though we're using negative quality. And the car itself, I'm leaning towards the usual five speed setup for us. 
Got some 14 inch wheels on there. Try to keep the under cladding we had before. Remo interior, which we have a huge bunch. Look at that, 59.3% familiarity. That's that slider, uh, the, the pressure slider at work for us. Because they had no pressure on some of those projects. We've put these eight tracks in other cars. Now we're building our new car, so it's going to be super fast to put it in the car. And just at a quick eyeball, we're looking at a mere 36 months to get this thing out the door. That's fast. The engine, on the other hand, we're looking at more like 65 months, apparently, uh, before sliders and stuff. What if it was, say, carbureted? What then? 63 months probably makes a difference. What if it was only two valves? That gains us reliability, too. Heck, what if it was cast iron? I was making baby steps towards early modern engine. 50 months? It's looking like I might have to develop this engine in the background again. In fact, I should have started earlier. Uh, for now, we'll shape it out with our old Lineda engine and its direct acting overhead cam. Which is the prototypical version of the dual overhead cam that we really want as a high-tech company. Let's see, we can also get some quality onto this. My initial impression is that we have to beat the uh, Primo E Coniglio 2. Basically all around. That's the whole point of a new model, right? And what I'm getting here is that it's just not as good. That's probably down to our suspension choice. I need to double check what we're comparing ourselves to in cost as well. This thing is 70 production units, which is, I think, a lot less. Yeah, the Coniglio 2 is 82 production units. So it's we're saving some money. And of course, I have to get those quality sliders up to something similar to what they were before, too. I might have to go to our company's traditional double wishbone all around. We do have a good familiarity bonus with it. And that brings us up to the point of actually scoring better on some stats. Or the same, anyway. Ah, there's another downside. This body, just it is what it is, it's considerably larger. Which is kind of against us in making small cars. But it helps with the comfort and prestige. And even with double wishbone, we've gained about 10% of the total price of the car, which is significant but we're still cheaper than the old car. There, after playing around, we have a car that's very slightly better than the Coniglio 2. I can't say it's the big leap forward that I was kind of hoping for, but it's something. I think what would really make this car would be an all-new engine. It looks like maybe I shouldn't give up on a new engine. If I play around with it, I'm looking under 48 months with this version I have here. This is a kind of a low-end example of a new engine. We can get the electronic fuel injection in here at minus three quality, which gives us a huge power boost. Uh, watching these stats here, going to a aluminum block just tanks my reliability immediately. So cast iron blocks gotta stay. Aluminum heads could be a possibility. 
I remember in older versions, it seemed like if you put aluminum heads on a cast iron engine, the reliability got a lot worse. But here, I'm not seeing that as much. But what do they cost us? Uh, we went from 46 months to 56 months. 10 months to get aluminum heads. I don't think I can quite do it. So let's say cast iron heads. I went to four valves. That adds a good chunk of man hours and engineering time. And it takes off our reliability a bit, but we can see the power going right up. And we're at 53 months. Eh. I'll just have to content myself with the, the real baby step of two-valve dual overhead cam compared to direct acting overhead cam. And actually, as I click that, you can see these two parallel charts. I was thinking maybe that's not a big enough change to make a new engine, but just look at that difference. I think it might be. All right, I hope you guys have all had the patience for me changing my mind 10 times per car. But now we've decided that the cast iron dual overhead cam two valve variant is viable, we can go ahead and tune it and see how much it actually benefits our car. I take that balancing mass down because we like our throttle response. It's a little bonus to our sportiness. Uh, of course, this is already featuring the electronic fuel injection, which uh, is surprisingly not... It, if we if we do it on an existing engine, it adds almost as much time as developing a new engine. But when we are already developing a new engine, it's not that bad to, to add this on. That's going to be a major change, and it should get us a lot more fuel efficiency. Uh, without any emissions changes, in fact, we're at uh, WES7, which is to say that we are currently good until 1991 without any changes. That's great for things that we're designing in 1974. I may actually hurt the emissions when I tune it more, though. For example, I can afford to get a little more cams on this sucker. And we'll get the compression up just until we see power start to drop off. We're not going to do a lot of positive quality uh, anywhere on this thing, I don't think. That can come for the revisions later. If we're being honest, I don't really make hardly any changes. And I can compare. I've already set up a version with the old engine. As it is, this seems to be hurting our drivability and comfort a bit, but it's more prestigious and more sporty and noticeably less reliable. That's going to come with the fact that our old engine was old and we were able to get those engineering sliders super high. So I need to get some drivability back into this. I think... The weight may have changed or got to do with a power band. I look at car stats. Do I see do I see them change as I tweak anything? I'm so like more power rather than less. It might actually just be our lack of power steering that's an issue. And they like like a long first gear. Uh, we're coming absolutely nowhere close to using all of the grip that our tires can provide. And yet still... Uh, what do we have in our drivability here? Is there a grip penalty? Torque curve gearing? Engine responsiveness gives us actually a penalty of drivability. 
Steering is giving us a big penalty. I think that's because the engine's getting a little heavy for no power steering. It's sitting over the front wheels. Uh, we don't have the option of making of going really crazy, making this a rear engine car, which would be fun. But this body just does not give us a rear engine option. So to make the steering nice, I might have to bite the bullet. Yeah, and click hydraulic. Which will also require me to take some quality out. That will be expensive. And why do I suck in the city so bad? Reliability is so-so. Safety is great. Prestige is great. Sportiness is great. Drivability is still better than average. Even if it's worse than the Coniglio 2, by this car being bigger. Oh. There's a problem. There's a big problem with this car. Uh, we also are a little too small, and we can't get three seats in the back. Uh, like the old car could. Actually, the old car was smaller considerably, and it let us have three seats in the back. That's just a quirk of automation for you. Sometimes the bodies don't give you the options you'd think they would have. But we're going to have to live with these little plus two seats. Yep, there's that grip bonus. You can see this changing. Uh, apparently it likes it to be first gear of 48 miles per hour, which is completely insane. Utterly off the wall for a car with 64 horsepower. Uh, otherwise, it's less drivable because of the lack of grip, supposedly. Even at the same time as there's a gearbox penalty that's working against that in the opposite direction. I want to hit those high drivability values, and I do, because they're worth a lot to our market. I end up with uh, some crazy long gearing. Otherwise, I've tweaked the tire size, the brakes. We've got some aerodynamic quality in here. I'm not sure how much more I can change. Actually, once again, we do see, despite the steering penalty, Manual rack and pinion is giving me a higher drivability than hydraulic. I'll just take that and slap all the quality I can afford onto it. And use the sportiness as a bonus. Now we just have to throw the visuals on here. Now, a little review of my visual design here. The first thing that I thought was that maybe I should try turning these giant uh, black plastic bumpers into painted pieces and would look like a little less of an 80s car, more of a 70s car, just seem a bit more natural. But uh, ultimately, I ended up going back on that after trying a few things. And we, uh, of course, ended up with the all black, both the front bumpers and the wheel wells. Uh, and my first inspiration cars were something like a Toyota Corolla, Honda Civic, and Fiat Panda of the era, which are all very kind of similar looking cars. They've got some square lights and the, like, no giant pronounced grill. Instead, there's sort of uh, some grill on the body and some grill in this big bumper piece. I tried to add some shape to the bumper, too. It was pretty awkward to get working out with these cutouts. Lots and lots of plastic. Those lights, I mean, they're proper 70s lights, but they seemed too 70s for the body. I end up going with these kind of more 80s lights. I think at the rate we're going, the car's going to the market in 78-ish, so it'll be a little ahead of its time for its style, but, you know, we'll, we'll live with it. Uh, I can also see the paint color I settled on here. I just named it Yam. I thought that the classic Kuroda orange was a little too dramatic for this era. And this seemed uh, more on theme. Th 
this might be our first car with the plastic wiper instead of the chrome ones too. We're just going to plastic everything all of a sudden because uh, that's what it seems like they did uh, in real life. I like that uh, extra bumper bar close to the bottom. It kind of uh, completes the plastic around the bottom of the car. And of course, those headlights, uh, sorry, the tail lights, I had to put in with a trick of placing them in 3D and then switching them back to 2D to get them to wrap around nicely. I also did adjust them uh, not on video before I was completely finished. So they're a little less pointy on the edge. <clears throat> And then the uh, that seam didn't go where I wanted it to for a hatchback car. I figured it should come all the way down to uh, where the lights are. I imagine that if you opened up the car, the, the lights would be part of the hatchback and they'd go all the way up. I really like those new text fixture badges we have. They uh, they save a lot of time. You used to have to put on each individual letter one at a time. I was messing around with this front uh, grill. I put a little tiny bit of chrome on it. You're not allowed much chrome in this period, but uh, I settled on this divider also in the middle that kind of resembles our first Coniglio, which had kind of two grills going on. Then for the interior, I, uh, I'm a little short on options. I actually end up downloading more mods after this. We've seen this dashboard used already, and it was honestly way ahead of its time when I used it before. In fact, it kind of still is, even for this car. But uh, we'll, we'll stick with it. It's a good 80s plastic dash. And I uh, debated on the seats. I ended up using some seats I've seen before, too. I looked at some pictures of the interiors of the uh, like Civic of that era, and yeah, the seats look like they haven't actually changed much since the 70s, or 60s even. Yeah, there are those. We've, we've seen those before. I even put more modern seats in the Caprice, and that was probably getting ahead of myself. Going for the classic sensei cheater move. I uh, don't like trying to fit carpet all the way around the trunk wheel well, so I just put the parcel shelf and hide everything. We gotta have some detail in there. I also fit these, uh, they're called 80s uh, door cards. They're vanilla fixtures instead of mods, but uh, I think they look a little too modern for this would be a very early 80s car. And that's like late 80s, but uh, it's fine. It's all fine. Three pedals. We haven't made an automatic car yet here at Corona. I wanted plasticky door handles, so I found some that would allow me to plasticize them fully. Now that we're back in the game, you can see that I did tweak the uh, the taillight a little bit so the blinker's not quite as pointed forward. And there's one thing that I didn't do, because uh, it doesn't copy-paste, is I did not pick out some wheels for it yet. So what we got? 70s, 80s, basic category. And hubcaps are an option as well. I gotta go back and look at my reference pictures a little bit. Yeah, we have a lot of steel wheels on these older cars. They're a little more stylized than steel wheels you'd see today. I like that. That'll do it, maybe. 
What, what else? 70 days steel category. Ooh. These are goofy looking, but I kind of like them because they uh, they don't have a lot of ventilation. Look like they're more fuel economy oriented. We've got our arrow quality in there. We can justify that design decision. And I don't think I really need to make any more tweaks. We're not we're not hitting city as nice as I want to. It's actually selling better in commuter apparently. But. Uh, this is the hatchback that this body variant gives us. We'll see how it does. I might see if I can just tweak that light a little bit, because it's, it's awfully pointy. I give a little, uh... A little of that. Where do we end up? Oh, that does look better. That looks a lot less awkwardly pointy. I have to widen that out a little bit. And we're in business. Now, of course, I have other variants to make. So we've got here a wagon. We've got a convertible coupe. We've got a regular coupe. I also think that the hatchback looks more sporty than the coupe. This doesn't look nearly as much like a sports car to me as the hatchback does. We even have a pickup and one that counts as a minivan and a delivery van. I think the wagon's gotta be a must-have, though. This lets us get uh, some more seats in there. I'm not sure if I want to make those look actually that much different, but. Eh, that'll pretty much do it. What markets are we hitting? Should we hopefully hitting, uh. Still fun! Passenger fleet, family utility. Can you go down a standard for them? Do they like that more? We have a Merde wagon, A. Eh? Let's put some cooling air flow on it and they love it all of a sudden. That paint, of course, has to be different. And uh, what else? We've got to have an elite version, right? Put some full-size rear seats in that. Computer, computer Premium wants. They want... I think four seats is enough for them. That's probably true for Premium Car as well. Then for Family, they like five seats. They hit Family, or Family Premium. I might just make a... Should I make a Primo Sedan? Or do I want to make a Mare Day? They can't decide now. I just hit luxury on this. Uh, our demographics haven't changed that much. We can hear premium pretty solid. It's kind of frustrating because I almost want to have every interior on every body type. That's going to be very problematic in the game. I also forgot, I forgot I chose alloy wheels. That looks like alloys you might see on a really early car with alloys. Maybe. Maybe they're hopefully not too new pushing. I like the retro alloy look, though. We get a modernized purple carrot color. A little flake in it. And, of course, a hood ornament for our elite version of the car. with a luxury interior and sound system. We have a Primo hatch, a Merde wagon, Elite sedan. I feel like I've got to have a delivery version. 
That's already four variants. That could be enough for the first generation. And we'll see if we spread this car across multiple factories or something, because we're going to have so many variants, it's going to be an issue. Yeah, that's the delivery. Doesn't actually seem to need much changes, surprisingly. And those variants went after the whole market for us. We're up to 50 months already with all the different interior types and body types. And I'm going to tweak my sliders and get 55 months. The same can be said for the engine. We'll make sure it's good. We'll throw money at the problem. And that's our pricing scheme. I think that being a little cheaper than the uh, old cars. That's with the factory expansion too. Now there's a bit of an issue. I'll have to take this off of its factories, cancel it. If we're building that new engine, it's gonna replace the Lanita. Well, it's gonna have to replace the Lanita in all the cars that use Lanita. I don't really want to go designing two engines at the same time, or, you know, building the two engines at the same time. First off, a name. We'll call it the Disco. After the marathon and sprint and gladiator, the sport of discus can be celebrated. And it's also just in time for disco to come into fashion. And it does occur to me that if I'm going to be putting this in other cars, I'll be making variants too. So I'll be tweaking the engineering sliders probably down some later to make up for those extra variants. And we are already planning on using way more money than we have, and I haven't started designing the other cars yet. But that's okay, we have a C-plus credit rating. We'll be fine. Man, the Caprice is already 10 years old. This will have to be the last update of it, I think. In fact, it honestly might not be a bad time to replace it as a model entirely. Only I'm not sure I want to put in the work of designing it right now. I can't help it. I'm way too tempted to go messing around with replacing the Caprice. And this Lotus-type body is matching the aesthetic of our new Coniglio as well. It's really bring us into the 70s. So I'm going to design it out. Rear-engined and double wishbone, because at this point, it's the only kind of car we know how to make, and we're probably sticking to it forever. Hmm. Downside. Literally nothing fits. Not even a 1.6-liter boxer. This chassis will not do. What about this guy? Oh, that's front engine. It's not exactly what I pictured for a Corona car, but we could try it. First off, a sport variant. We can rivet out to 85 horsepower, which is a little bump over the old Lanita Sport. I can't say why it turns out this way, but our new sports car example turns out with less drivability by a lot compared to the Caprice. And a bit more sportiness. If I look at the detailed stats, I have a huge circle test penalty. What does that mean? I don't even know. And a grip penalty. 
and a tires penalty. They probably like some medium compounds more. Only dozens in practice. After much deliberation, I don't know why, but I can't make the stats as good on this car as they were on the old Caprice. So that's not going to happen right now. Maybe next episode we'll vote on a new sports slash supercar. Meanwhile, the uh, existing Caprice is going to get the new engine, which uh, it does not like either, actually, come to think of it. I have to gear it out a little longer, maybe. Now, since I think we're going to be in development for a while, waiting for this new engine, I can also go ahead and update the safety. That's a major change to the Caprice, but it'll be fine, I think. I'm sure I can also afford to go ahead and do an update to the Gladiatore. With electronic fuel injection. That'll immediately give us some more horsepower. We still have a 0-60 to 60 time of under 6 seconds. That's pretty good. Uh, what else we got going on here? don't think I actually need to change. Oh, no, we need, uh, we're going faster. We need more brake airflow. We already have brake airflow. We need brake pads. We need, we need vented discs. We have those now. Or less pads, softer pads. That's good for comfort. I remember we're building cars. We were actually going to drive around day to day. They can't just be racetrack brakes. And uh, it's probably as good a time as any to go build a turbo, right? Since we're waiting for that other engine. It's going to be a long facelift. Let's find out what the Gladiatore can do with a turbocharger. First off, I'm assuming we're going straight to forge parts all around. Hold this thing together. And we slap that turbo on there, take a lot of compression out, and we're looking at 250 horsepower, and it's probably, like, undrivable. So let's smooth that graph out. We've been through this rigmarole a couple times already. I guess depending on how much I decided to cut from the video, because I did end up going with those turbochargers, you uh, might kind of already know what I'm doing here. I don't know if I need to explain or not. What we want is like a flat wide power band that doesn't quite, you know, have crazy turbo lag and stuff. This graph you're seeing, look at how steep that torque curve gets. There will still be turbo lag, but at least you have a usable power band. We're at 220 horsepower is probably easier to drive than that uh, 250 horsepower we started without tuning. And what's my flow look like? Very exhaust choked. Oh yeah, I'm using a crap turbo because we want to save on engineering time. They'll still pass emissions. Ooh, getting into over speed kind of range here. Yeah, because we're actually 245 horsepower. Okay. Uh, can the parts handle it? We have a 10% reliability penalty. I guess we'll deal with it. Oh, turbo mid. By the way, not race headers, we need mid headers. 
That's not even taking off any power. Uh oh. We are we are engine block limited. <laughs> we down bore it. That hardly helps. You'd think leaving an extra whole millimeter of cylinder wall would make a bigger difference. Power limit at 189, 195. Take some cams out. Get that peak power down a little bit. Dump on it by choking it at the manifold. That you can see yeah, as I changed it to being actually powerful down to choked, we only lose a little sportiness and we gain a lot of drivability. We're having a hard time actually handling that power in the car. Did we get the uh EFI? Yeah, we got that in here. And we gotta get some longer gearing. That top speed up there. Longer first gear. Keep our grip on our control a bit. The actual sportiness and drivability numbers don't go up as much as you think from running a ton of power. It just astounds me every time, but uh, the prestige goes up. We compare this to the non-turbo. It basically says it's worse in every way except for prestige. But uh, I bet someone's going to buy it. I'm curious, what do our predicted sales look like? At these guesstimated prices. Yeah, the turbo will definitely still sell. The labels have vanished again. But I think this is like super or something. It'll sell there. And if it's going for a higher price, then hey, sure. Can be our Halo car. Our ultimate prestige car. Turbo. Gotta say it. And all that mess with still a single exhaust outlet. This is in fact a single exhaust car. And engineering time is... Normally I might say this is way too high for a facelift, but... Uh, we're waiting 55 months on that other car to come along, so... Yeah, why not? And then even this is only going to be on sale for until we get something else. And the Gladiatore comes creeping closer to being maybe kind of viable. But not really in the trucks. Just by virtue of the fact that it has that aluminum block and we saw how much of a reliability penalty that gets. It reminds me, we're making the uh, normally aspirated version. We're buying a Forge Works, we need to do that to handle those turbo parts. Well, first of all, can I handle this without Forge parts in retrospect? The answer is. kinda yeah if I dump quality on it. Actually, not at all. Never mind. Conrods will break. It's got to be forged. And do a bit of a goofy thing here. If I hold the engine to compare the costs, we switch to forged everything. And then we just go negative, negative, negative quality. Well, it does cost us some horsepower. But uh, we end up with about the same reliability. 
and having saved three man hours for some reason and some engineering time. Since we're using the forge works, might as well, right? I'm going to double check that the car still passes emissions. Yep, our version with very low quality forge parts still passes emissions just fine. All right, we've got a pricing scheme in, and these are not cheap cars. Although the, uh, just the Primo is not too horrible. And the last thing to do is to get the Cetriolo onto the new engine. It's not a six cylinder, like I know some people were rooting for, but uh, it does have like 12 more horsepower and it's gonna be worth something. Hopefully I don't have to tweak the cars too much to pass emissions or anything like that. So the Disco Standard A with electronic fuel injection. How are we doing? WES4, that's no good. I'm gonna have to make a freaking emissions variant for these goddamn trucks. What a pain in the ass. They're they're showing us more desirable than they were before though. Earlier they're all like yellow. Now they're now they're green. So at least they like the engine power. Alright, let's freaking let's go. Let's clone standard. Make the truck version of the disco. Cams, goodbye. Lean as it comes. We're at sixty-three horsepower. So what we what did we lose in trying to get emissions? We lost a couple horsepower. We lost a lot of throttle responsiveness, which is fortunately not something the trucks care about. Maybe I should try and keep that throttle responsiveness on a two variants so that the the cars feel more sporty from that. It's going to be the truck variant. Might as well have whatever makes it more reliable, too. And let's see, we're on to eight tracks. I didn't put arrow in all these cars. That'll help too. Change weight to heavier. That'll uh, give us reliability because of everything else. Still passing. Yeah, let's make those changes. Make sure every variant has them too. Heavier, more aerodynamic. You're heavier. Arrow's already in. Disco truck variant. We actually lost a frickin' mile per gallon going to this engine somehow. Getting it back with some gearing. And I haven't, it doesn't kill my utility too much, so I have more power. But, uh, oof. And, uh, while we're at it, everybody gets vented disc brakes, which are definitely something that the trucks need. Now we get to do what uh, really makes a utility vehicle sell. This is why you see utility vehicles not really change and update with new models as often as other types might. You get to crank these reliability sliders. Bring it cheaper, simpler, and that's going to make it better. And that variant didn't add any engineering time, so I'm happy. It is going to make our factories a little bit less efficient, but I think we can live with it. I considered taking one variant out of the small factory for more efficiency, because smaller factories like less variants, but it didn't look like the actual cost effect was going to be that much. I'll go ahead and size up the factory. Now these should be some comfortably cheap vehicles. It's looking like it could be massively profitable. Okay, whew. Two new engines, a new model, two facelifts, 55 months, 
this should finally conclude the episode. Well, I'll do some BMG driving too. And a one billion dollar loan, which we're gonna pay off over the course of like a hundred months. I had better save. All right, we're already locked in. We can't really change our strategy. But I am thinking I haven't checked up on the markets recently. And uh, another good thing is we are bringing in the dough. We're going to need those cash reserves once we start building factories. So where are our sales? In Fruinia? Uh, looks like delivery is actually our top market. With family being second. Uh, no city being second. It's a close second. We started selling in Gasmia. Looks like the trucks are selling. The sport cars are selling a little bit as well. City cars, not very impressive there. Hetvesia sales are pretty low all around. We do a, a chunk of city cars. Arcana, we are starting to slowly penetrate. Our market awareness is actually getting very high in Arcana. Or sorry, in Deluha, I'm looking at. But it's not translating to a lot of sales. Might be a fuel availability thing, too, because we're using unleaded fuel. Arcana, we have not sold a single car. Even though I thought they were unlocked by now. In the sales breakdown, we're way down here. Our rival Vizair transport isn't even in the top, like, six. That's all. The best seller is Family Small 5 Ruinia, which has this ghastly looking thing. Somehow that's a commuter car. I don't get it. I won't get it. The Zair hasn't changed their lineup. They have the Lyre and the Valyrian, which is their medium sized car. And the Narwhal, they're competing with us on truck type things too. I wonder who's selling better in delivery. Narwhal delivery is moving 1,300 sales. That seems uh, preposterous to me, but sure, whatever. And we are a few behind at 400 sales of our delivery van, which comes across as more expensive. How are we doing? Our reliability 77, utility 41, drivability 50. Yeah, our car is more comfortable, not quite as drivability, more reliable. I think we're making a better car. Those guys just made a dirty deal. That's how they're beating us. It's not fair. You know, maybe we just need to imagine that when I went into the difficulty settings and I chose, you know, 130% competitor difficulty, maybe it's not so much that they're making better cars. But, uh, oh, we have a quality control issue. I will do a full recall. Maybe it's not so much that they're making better cars, but instead we have uh, just terrible marketing. Maybe uh, I have a bad personality running the company. I just annoy every customer I talk to. Somehow that feels realistic to me. And it looks like uh, Coniglio Merit sales are up. They were down for a while, to like 800. Now they're over 2,000 again. All right, couple of years out, we still have a lot of pre-orders. Clearly we need bigger factories all around. Just gonna up some prices to make us some money. And uh, at this point, we're still looking pretty good on income. I'm going to dump a couple more million into R&D. What do we want? Should be making a new engine for a while. 
I gotta crank that fuel system and exhaust though. And top end. We want top end quality. Body types, yeah. Get them going. Chassis. I think we'll be making a new model hopefully soon. Very expensive though. Drive train tech, put a little in the wheels, brakes. Ooh, now we're up to everything. We're spending a lot. Yeah, it's pricey, it's pricey. How are we looking? Yeah, I took a big chunk. Still profiting, though. Marketing 10 million, R&D 18 million. Clearly, I need to spend more on marketing, too. But not too much more, because I need money to just keep coming in. Wow, are we up to 83% market awareness in City Ferenia? That's crazy. Gas me is where I need to focus my marketing into more. All that money we make, we've got to spend it. Otherwise, we just give it back in taxes. We are about to unlock all-wheel drive. 27.8 million dollars of taxes. Oof. Leaded fuel is banned. Look, we got ahead of that. For when it bans leaded fuel first, it's our home country, so we're banning it early. Or we're switching to unleaded early. Uh, everyone else should be getting used to that now. So, the issue of unleaded fuel not being available to some markets should be less of a problem soon. Ooh, body is unlocked. Those are some very modern looking cars. And this is the part where all the cash has been flowing in during our loan. That starts paying off as soon as the project starts. Uh, starts flowing out as we build our factories. A couple cars are getting a larger factory. But we don't seem to be in trouble at all. We took out a loan for just about a billion dollars. And it looks like we're going to end with cash reserves of almost 700 million. So we have, I mean, more debt than cash, but not a terrible ratio. In fact, our credit score is better than when we started. Because we spent a few years just happily selling cars. I think I can go right along into 1980. And we'll check how these things are selling. Oh wow, I need to up prices or make bigger factories too. Pre-orders are not getting fulfilled. The Coniglio 3 uh, Primo shows up as crap desirability, but it's selling the best out of anything. So I don't even know how they come up with this logic. The Wagon is only 100%, so it's only equal to competition. But, you know, whatever. It's doing well. You can see basically every car has pre-orders uh, rising quickly and then plateauing as production goes into place. The Cetriolo is considered crazy desirable by everybody. Look at that. 650% desirability in light delivery. They just absolutely are an underserved market. And the Caprice is also showing crap desirability. But maybe it's just think to our market awareness, it's selling great. Not really sure what to make of that. Now we can look in the whole dang world. It looks like our biggest single market is light delivery. And we do have both the Cetriolo uh, big van and the Coniglio little van selling to that market. And then after that, man, City has really fallen off to only like 300 sales. That's our, our core market, I thought. It's where we started. But it's not doing so great now. Family cars are a big seller. I'm not sure exactly which trims we're selling, or actually I can be sure. Let's just go to family. 
Uh, not Vizair Transport. We want to know how we're doing. Where are we? Can't find us. Dunbar 3. Not a big family car seller. 22 people bought their Model 2 Mark 6. They sure keep models around for a long time. Vizair's Valerian is their best family seller. It's also been around for 12 years at this point now. And the Liar is getting some sales. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that's right. Who's the king? I say we're going to get ahead of Vizair, and we did in Family Market, at least. So go figure. The Coniglio 3 Elite, our absolute top of the end with luxury interior, is the best-selling family car for us. Uh, and that's true... Yeah, in Gasmia, it's true. In... wait, hold on. <laughs> okay, so there's clearly some different national tastes going on. Let's break this down one country at a time. So our best-selling family car is the Coniglio 3 Elite. First off, that's probably because it's the only car we have that's an actual sedan with five seats. Uh, so I think that's reasonable to say there's going to be demand for a cheaper one with a premium instead of a luxury interior. But that said, Gasmians seem to like our luxury interior small car. I guess it's the cheapest car they can get with a luxury interior. And then the Coniglio Primo is actually not far behind it, and this thing is the wrong body type and not enough seats. So yeah, that's showing that we probably should be making a cheaper... Uh, family sedan with five seats. Then the wagon selling to them that too. It would. Uh, in Arcana, we sold... Yeah, the, the van is their main family car and some Merde wagons. But these are tiny sample sizes anyway. It's only a scattering of cars. Hetvesia looks the same as Gasmia. Uh, in Fruinia, our home country... Again, family buyers are buying the Accompimento. It's like the SUV craze is already starting in 1980. They like that big old van and all the seats in it. And the Merde Wagon is the second behind that. Then the Coniglio Primo, then the Elite. So the, the wagon's also kind of closer to being normal for them. And Deluja looks the same. Keep in mind, they like their large cars, too. Uh, fun market. We are not selling any Caprice to the fun market. It must be too expensive by far. Fun premium. We're selling a couple Caprice. Well, that's in Deluja. Should be looking at all countries again. Yeah, we get a little extra sales to the fun market of our regular cars, just because we make them sporty. Fun premium is the same thing. I'm not entirely sure where all of our Caprice cars are going, because they're selling great. Uh, Light Sport, I guess. That's it. Light Sport. Light Sport Premium. Not Light Sport Premium. Mostly just Light Sport. Uh, muscle? Yeah, a few in the muscle of the Elites only. Sport. Regular Sport. They're selling well. And a handful of the Turbos into Super. That's good to know. And we're also making some grand touring sales. That's, uh, you know, your, your long road trip fast car. That makes sense. We have good interiors in these things. Anyway, in City, we are... still behind Vizair. We're, we're four spaces behind him. The Coniglio Primo A is, of course, our best seller, but the numbers are not impressive overall. It might be more than submitted by other markets, though. I'm a little unclear where this thing's ending up, most of all. Uh, commuter? Yeah, it's getting more commuter sales than city sales. And again, that's a little goofy, because commuter doesn't prefer the hatchback. I think that this hatchback body, because it can only have the plus two rear seats instead of full-size seats, I think that's really hurting it. So normally the hatchback would be our flagship, our main car, but in this case, it seems like uh, it's hampered a bit. Delivery, we're selling twice as many of the big vans as the little vans. That's good to know. 
that's that's regular delivery. What about light delivery? A uh, similar story. Pony buys some Caniglios. Okay, that's a little silly. That's a little unlikely, I think. Pony car is like, you know, compact with a bit of horsepower. It's your big American V6 or something. Uh, but uh, we're we're selling a 1.6 liter car. I mean, come on. Clearly, some people are choosing them. Not a lot. I mean, we're pretty far down anyway. It, well, no, we're very far down. I take it back. It makes sense we're selling a few cars in that market, as opposed to, like, none. But, you know, that's how it goes. And market awareness is... stupid high in Fruinia. We're penetrating most of the market. It's actually disappointing that we're not, uh... getting more market share of stuff like City or City Premium. Yeah, 2% of market sold to for City Furunia. We seem to have lost that market somehow in favor of gaining the other markets, I guess. It could be the problem is just that our car is, you know, almost twice as much footprint as the last version that we made. We might need to make a subcompact as well as a mid-sized car if we want to hit all the markets. So, uh, coming up on the next episode, I guess we'll want to hear what we're doing next. We'll have a quick look at the bodies, because we may want to make, say, a mid-sized car. We may want to make a new sports car. It could be multiple new cars next time. Our body unlock year is 1986 and rapidly climbing. I like this 1987 uh, Honda NSX thing. I might like this for a city-only hatchback, the 2.2 we're going to unlock soon. And we've got uh, some reasonable mid-size looking options. We've got SUVs we could branch into. I like this, it's like a golf kind of thing. Big full-size van. I don't think we need to replace the Cetriolo yet. We're finally reaping the benefits of all those crazy sliders we put into it. commoner. I like this body for a, maybe a mid-size. Ooh, 84 hatchback. That's that's a nice also for a hatchback only. Although it is hatchback only, which is a downside. We got micro sports cars. I do like sticking to rear engine for our our sports car. We have these bean things. These could be an option. This is on theme for us. There's a 1987 bean thing too. Well, that's enough for now. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments what you want to see happen next. It's definitely time to use our $700 million war chest to expand into one or two new models and new trims for our existing models. The uh, Caniglio 3 can probably expand it. If we put a second factory on it, we could have a stupid number of different trims. Here we are at the automation test track with the new Caprice Elite Turbo. Now, the stats in game say that this thing just plain handles and feels worse, and I'm here to find out if that's true. Uh, we also have our lovely hood ornament missing some textures, and that's probably my fault. I'll look up what's causing that later. Fortunately, I don't exactly remember what time I got last time I brought the Caprice around. Wow, okay. Ooh. Yes, this thing does feel... It's not on the steering graph. Yeah, something funky happens with a torque curve and the back wants to go everywhere. I guess that uh, the first turbo Porsche was known for the same thing. 
I'm not sure that we count as being as fast or impressive, though. Whoa! some impressive speeds down here and we oh my we do not have aerodynamics yes i think it's fair to say that we may have flown a little too close to the sun this thing's a real widow maker now we find our nucleo third generation in the newly unlocked country of Gasmia. Yes, cars are starting to sell here. Much like in real life, during this time, foreign imports took a big chunk out of American car sales. We're in for a slice of the pie on Gasmia, the largest car market. So it's time to see how this thing handles on some bigger, more open roads than our home of Ruinia. Of course, I don't think the Coniglio is really taking a huge chunk out of Gasmia's market, like what happened with, you know, Toyota or something. We're more of an also-ran, but I like to imagine. I think we fit the bill here. It's really good we have that new fuel injection because it lets our car actually handle okay while passing strict emission standards. That extra 10 horsepower is already making a big difference. The uh, Even the last generation of Coniglia was a little iffy on the highway in terms of power. This feels like it's getting there. As for the handling, nothing too shocking. We've always had a bit of a nice sporty vibe, and it still does. But it's front wheel drive, it's very predictable. Man, traffic is nuts over here. I gotta say, the game has once again let me make a first gear that's probably just playing too long. So, now you might see the uncomfortably long geared Coniglio wandering around Gasmian towns in between workplaces, and later as a cheap beater student car, 30 years old and still running, because we are more reliable than the competition. We got that going for us. Or at least the last ones were. I think these ones are decent. The first generation's always a little iffy. That's why we need you to leave a comment and tell us what to change next time.